All right. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Good morning. Mm. Okay. Thank you to Group One for joining Group Three today. So I don't have choice. Uh, we have to cover the last uh, lecture today. Okay. So our last lecture will be about LU8. Okay. Um, and it's about fermentation back. Okay. Last week we talked about downstream processing. Um, so today we are going back to fermentation um, and it's about scale up of fermentation process. Okay. I hope you have uh, have a look at um, the intro on ELIP on what is scale up fermentation or fermentation basically. All right. Um, so if you see the, the name of the topic scale up of fermentation process, so it's two different concepts. Scale up is, is a concept by itself. And fermentation is a concept by itself, as you know, right? You have covered uh, seven LUs or six LUs on uh, fermentation before, okay? But if we, when we join the two things, it means that we are, uh, we are expected to increase the size of the fermentation process, okay? But does, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that scale up belongs to fermentation. It can be scale up of uh, centrifugation. Yeah? In downstream, there are so many unit operations. Uh, there is scale up of sanctification. There is scale up of uh, filtration. Scale up of uh, chromatography. Okay, so scale up is just a generic concept. But here we focus on how to scale up the fermentation process. Okay, uh, and we we don't cover scale up of any of the downstream processing operation. Okay, so that is basically um, today's topic. Okay. Um, Let's have a look at the lecture notes. All right. So this is the outline of today's topic. Uh, we're going to have a look at some introduction uh why we want to scale up what is the importance of it um when do we need to scale up uh the fermentation process what are the stages in scaling up yeah uh, studies uh what are the changes okay this is more to how how we're going to do the scale up it means that what are the things that we need to change what are the things that we need to maintain okay what are the methods how how eh? and finally we're going to have a look at a case re a review how uh, what, how is the procedure? How how is the procedure to scale up uh, an aerobic fermentation? Okay, this one is more specific aerobic fermentation from a mini bioreactor to lab scale fermenter. Okay, so when, whenever we talk about scale up, we are talking about two scales. It must be between two scales, from smaller scale to larger scale. Okay, and. Uh, Scale up is, is, is actually a type of research. Okay? In, in research, there are many types of study, right? That, ex, that is explained by your FYP topic. Some of you are doing screening of microorganisms from whatsoever the locations, and you are looking for uh, certain traits, right? You are looking for microorganisms that can produce certain metabolites. Okay, that is a kind of study screening, yeah, and you also have uh, you also have to identify. It's not just about screening. You have to identify what are those microbes. So that is a type of study. Uh, if let's say you are focusing on fermentation, you are optimizing the whatever the parameters, regardless how the number of the parameters. If let's say you are focusing on the media, you are doing optimization study. Okay, that is the type of the study. Scale up is another type. Scale up means that we want to know how we're going to uh, optimize, uh, optimize an optimal fermentation. Okay, and basically it it goes in um, the the flow is like um, in upstream. Hold on. So basically in uh, upstream. We start with uh, the microbes uh, development or uh, screening or identification, right? Development, screening, uh, identification. So this is um, more to microbiology, yeah? but this is uh, part of the 
upstream, yeah? upstream. So uh, it must actually follow the flow. Lah. Okay. Now, um, let's say development means that maybe you want to modify the genetics of the microbes. So we are doing like genetic engineering or recombinant. Uh, you, you are doing recombinant, recombinant DNA technology, RDT. Yeah. So it means that, you know, you are going to create a mutant. Or if, let's say, you are dealing with mut um, wild-type microbes, you screen from the original sources, uh, like soil or wastewater. So you screen, you identify it. So that, that's a type of study. So after we have identified whatsoever the... Why it doesn't detect my pencil? whatever the microbes, right? Then you proceed with the fermentation, yeah? fermentation process. So this is where you, uh, you, have, you have already the strain, whatever the microbes, and you want to grow it. So it means you want to study what are the parameters, whatever the parameters, yeah? it can be a lot. So this is optimization, uh, optimization. Optimization study, isn't it? So after you have developed, let's say you have identified all the parameters, you have you already know how to uh, carry out, how to uh, produce high amount of the product yeah? fermentation, um, means that the process is optimal already. Then, uh, and normally these ones are all in lab scale. Something wrong with my pencil, sorry. Yeah? I can't detect my pencil. Uh, charging job. Okay, so uh, okay. After you have developed an optimal fermentation at the lab scale, all of these are in lab scale, small scale. Means that the research and development must start at the lab scale. Yeah? So after you have developed, after you have uh, you have uh, optimized the parameters, only then you want to scale up the operation. Means that you want to increase the production of your target products, of your maybe vaccine. You want to produce more. So that is where you want to scale up. And uh, talking about scale up, there are stages. Scale up within the lab scale, uh, scale up uh, from lab scale to pilot scale, and scale up from uh, pilot scale to industrial scale. So we're going to look, uh, have a look at the stages later, okay? So basically that is the flow. Yeah? We start with the development, uh, the screening of the microbes, then we move to the fermentation. Once we get the optimal strategy to uh, ferment, uh, the microbes and only then we scale up. Yeah? So that, that's how you see uh, the flow and where scale up is in bioprocess or in upstream uh, field. Okay, now what is um, scale up? I've mentioned just now is something to do with increasing the size, increasing the size. And there must be between one scale, small scale and uh, large scale, okay? There must be between two scales, two different scales. Um, yeah, and scale here means bioreactor, okay? Bioreactor. So it means if, let's say, a small bioreactor from one liter fermenter to, let's say, 10 liter fermenter, that is a scale up. I mean, like, you want to study how to transfer that sort of uh, fermentation. Let's say from 10 liter to 1,000 liter, that is also a scale up. Yeah? So that, that is the basics of scale up. It, it must be to increase the size of fermentation and involving two different scale of fermenters. Um, the essence of scale up of a fermentation process is to demonstrate fermentation at a large scale, resulting in the same productivity and quality as that developed at small scale. Okay, remember, when you have developed an optimal fermentation at lab scale, that is like you are satisfied with the product title, you think that that is good enough, right? And when you want to scale it up, you want to make sure that the performance of the fermentation is similar, is not reduced when it is produced in large scale, okay? Uh, so that is the objective, the same productivity, okay? So this is a keyword, uh, keyword, eh? same productivity as and quality as that developed at small scale. It's not more, if let's say you get more, that's better, but uh, the normal case is normally the problem in the large scale, we normally get uh, lower production, lower productivity compared to the small scale because large scale is more challenging. 
Okay, it's more challenging. Um, yeah, but if let's say you got same, same means like similar, okay, comparable. Okay, there is another term that you have to learn eh, if you do not know this word. Comparable. Comparable means lebih kurang sama. Compare, comparable. Okay, this is the objective. Not to get, not necessary to get higher or of course not to get lower productivity. Eh? We want to maintain the same quality of the performance. That is the objective, the target. Fermentation is usually the costliest and complex unit operation. There are many parameters involving the performance and especially we are dealing with microbes. Um, it's more challenging. It's more challenging than you expect. Sometimes you think everything is okay, but when you run the fermentation, something happened, your, your microbes do not grow, that's normal. Um, and you have to figure out, it's, it's just like you have to solve the puzzles. Uh, throughout the process, okay? It's not uh, an easy process because it's in, it involves the microbes. Microbes are biological things. It's like us. Sometimes we are okay, sometimes we are not. Sometimes we are happy, sometimes we are not, right? So the same thing goes to the microbes. But it's just that they don't tell you in the lab, okay? So, uh, so that's the thing that we have to face when we uh, do the fermentation. And especially for you who are doing fermentation for FYP, uh, you have to be patient, patient in anything, lah, patient. Eh? Uh, let's say you plan for 12 fermentation. It doesn't mean that that is the only number of fermentation that you have to do. It may be more, okay? Uh, and it's normal. It's not just happened to you. It's not because of you are, you, you, you know, that's your mistake. No, it's not, okay? It's a process of learning, okay? Uh, so you have to be uh, prepared, not just physically, it's going to be tiring uh, working in the lab, but you have to be uh, prepared mentally as well. Uh, so be positive, don't give up too early, okay? Uh, so it's normal. Uh, then it's not, uh, it's, it's actually quite boring lah working in the lab, to be honest, okay? Uh, I've been working in the lab for many years. For my um, master, for my PhD, I've spent many, many days in the lab. Uh -huh. So you, you imagine, master, master is like two years, is two and a half years, I did two and a half years. You have to sacrifice lah, macam FYP sekarang pun kena sacrifice kan? Ah, lama. Nah, talking about motivation in the lab. Jap lah. Jap macam ni? Dia uh, selalu hilang macam ni. Okay, since you are going to uh, start your FYP soon, so I'm going to give you some motivation. Jap. Um, share. Okay, apa tadi? Apa yang cakap tadi? Uh, okay, in the lab kan? Uh, so you have to be uh, prepared mentally, okay? Uh, so, apa nak cakap? Um, kena, we have to sacrifice lah. I know now now you also have to sacrifice kan? Cuti uh, ni, apa, orang lain cuti, you, you dekat campus, yeah? you, you you have homesick, kan? That's normal, this is FYP kan? Kalau you imagine uh, we are doing master, Two and a half years doing research in the lab. Nanti you masuk F, uh, FYP, masuk lab pun you akan rasa you kena buat. Tidak ada choice. Tapi boring sebenarnya. Tapi to be honest, it's boring. Tapi kalau you take it positively, you learn, you 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 apa? Uh, you recording. Uh, you take it positively. You you make it like something that you have to enjoy. Uh, you ni lah. You enjoy lah. Tapi tak payah lah stress sangat. Okay. Um, and uh, failure in the lab is normal, okay? It's normal. Uh, and don't give to, don't give up too early. Uh, memang akan banyak failures. Memang akan banyak eksperimen tak jadi, first time tak jadi, second time tak jadi. Tapi you learn lah from that. You learn and grow, okay? Uh, so kalau let's say kali ni, okay, you learn something. Of course you learn something from your mistake. If let's say your experiment does not work, you, you have learned something. Maybe your pipetting technique is, is wrong. So everything must be ni tau, must, must be embedded together. Your pipetting techniques, your sampling techniques, your what, your measurement techniques, everything. That is the thing that you have to learn in the lab. Okay? Uh, then, tadi lah, don't give up too early. Okay? Uh, be, be prepared 
mentally, not just physically. Uh, I know that uh, to to have breakdown is very easy like in the lab. Eh? If you think about master, kan, I bought master two and a half years in the lab. Kalau FYP just one one semester, kan, nanti you dekat lab. So kalau, kalau if, uh, let's say you, you want to do master by research, you have to spend two and a half years. Bayangkan, two and a half years in the lab, going to the lab, uh, masa orang cuti, you buat lab, you know, you just have to do that. Okay, kalau la, tambah lagi I, PhD, four years. Uh, four years I dekat UK, uh, raya, online raya, I pergi lab. So it's something that you have to sacrifice, okay? So at this time, uh, banyak benda, Banyak benda lah you kena sacrifice eh? uh, perayaan ke apa ataupun eh ni okay uh, so be strong lah be strong okay everyone is in the same boat as you and you are not alone you are not alone yeah okay uh, then how to overcome uh, apa screen how to overcome sometimes when you do research kan banyak benda you tak tahu Banyak benda you rasa macam apa ni yang macam semua tak tahu kan? So it makes you overwhelmed. I know that. Tapi how to reduce such things? You start from the beginning, okay? Especially when you start your lab work later. Uh, when you start your lab work later. Please please start your lab work um, from the first week of semester two. Okay, at least maybe some of you tak masuk lab lagi sekarang. Uh, ataupun... Uh, some of you mungkin ada yang balik awal masa mid sem apa masa inter semester break nanti kan you sacrifice your one week of break you masuk lab awal okay that's good tapi let's say kalau you tak dapat tapi week one of semester you can start okay so kenapa I, why I uh, stress this because uh, masa pandemic two years ago eh? uh, it was in 20, 2020 2020 so masa tu macam uh, before the pandemic, it was everything was normal. We don't expect anything uh, about lockdown, everything kan. So masa tu uh, my FYP macam biasa lah, macam uh, ada yang start lambat, eh, uh, lab work. So what I mean by start lambat is week five baru nak start macam tu. Ataupun mid same break baru nak buat kerja. Uh, you cannot do that. You cannot uh, you cannot plan daripada from the beginning of the semester. So that you tak overwhelm lah, you tak rasa panic. Kalau you ada, you you do mistakes, you have time still to do to correct your uh, experiment. Okay. Uh, so what happened to that batch 2000 tu? So uh, the lockdown was after the mid sem break. Okay. So half of the semester. So some of my students, um, some of the students, not my students, some of the students yang lambat start uh, lab work, they on uh, they on start masa mid sem break. They on plan nak buat masa mid sem break. So maknanya dia tak ada result. Tak ada result uh, uh, until mid of the semester tu tak ada result lagi. Okay. Those yang buat awal, yang start awal daripada first week dah buat kerja lab work, they have some results lah even though some of the results are not perfect. That's okay. Tapi at least ada progress. So what happened uh, when the lockdown was announced and it was during uh, mid semester break, uh, lab tutup, okay. So we don't have any authority as well to ask the student to to do the lab work, so yang tak ada result tu kena kena pandai-pandai lah dia punya final year report. Uh, so can you imagine? So we are still in pandemic time now, okay? Uh, so just to remind you guys, as much as possible, be uh, do your things, do do your experiments as early as possible, because we do not know when is the next lockdown, okay? So dalam uh, that in that um, situation, uh, my student yang Buat kerja awal, eh, dia ada lah result sikit nak report. Okay, although we we don't expect them to report everything, but those yang tak ada result tu, lecture dia pula yang pening nak fikir macam mana nak. You have to submit the FYP report at the end. So how to accommodate to that situation? Okay, uh, so my advice to you next semester, start awal. Okay, start awal, plan awal so that you tak overwhelm. Okay, you start from the first week at least. You to, uh, you. See your supervisor, apa yang you kena buat, okay? Uh, push your supervisor, uh, push in a positive way lah. Yeah. So, jangan jangan you stress, you tak cari your supervisor and then sampai mid sem break, sampai week 7, week 9, uh, tu dah panik lah, tu dah mula panik lah. Yeah. Uh, okay? Okay, so that is my advice lah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, be organized in your work. Uh, whenever you do the the work in the lab kena ada logbook. You know what logbook is? 
Okay, some of you are going digital. If you if you apa tulis dekat dekat tablet pun okay, but if you prefer physical book, buy a logbook, a, a long logbook, right? And then write everything that you do and learn uh, every day in the lab. Jangan uh, don't don't think that uh, the supervisor will check the logbook. Tak, it's for you for your own sake. Okay, tulis je apa apa. Tak payah kemas sangat pun. But you tulis apa yang you tengok, apa you dapat. Apa yang you belajar. Let's say hari ni you tak masuk lab. Tapi you ada baca artikel. Just write down the things. So that's, you know, at the end of your semester, you tengok balik apa yang you belajar. Sometimes the things that you tengok tu kan, oh, it looks cloudy. Maybe kalau let's, let's say you take picture, that's good. That's better. And then you put on the in the lab uh, logbook. That's better. Tapi kadang-kadang benda-benda kecil tu dia, kita rasa macam, oh, tahu macam mana nak buat ni. Tapi bila after some, some time, uh, you might forget. Okay. So that was my um, atomic habit lah. Bila I dekat lab, I akan ada logbook, I akan tulis. Masa masa I PhD, I have nine logbooks. Can you imagine? Nine logbooks. I don't have the picture here. Uh, master tak banyak lah, dua tahun kan. One or two, two logbooks. But it, it means a lot. That logbook means a lot. Okay, it helps you. And that is that is the way how a researcher do their work in the lab. Okay, uh, so the key thing here is be organized. Be prepared, okay, uh, and don't leave everything to the last minute, okay, because it will overwhelm you more. Okay, of course, it will overwhelm every everyone, okay, uh, tapi at least you kurang kan lah, dia punya panic tu dengan preparation, okay. Okay, then uh, motivation. Okay, um, uh, fermentation is the, is the costliest and complex unit operation, okay, because of this, uh, we have to do like careful, we have to take careful measure whenever we want to translate the fermentation from lab scale to larger scale. Because uh, if let's say we don't follow certain rules or certain procedure, it will cost us a lot, especially in the industry. They do not want to have waste. They do not want to have loss, right? For example, like the vaccine uh, company, yeah, because the the process of making vaccine, the media, everything is expensive, the equipment. So they must follow certain procedure. So that's why uh, um, a knowledge in scale up is important. Okay, how to scale up fermentation. Okay, because of that facts. All right, uh, scale up serves to minimize the risk of large capital investment in the full scale manufacturing plant by further validating the process. Okay, that's the importance of scale up. Okay, now, what is the objective of scaling up? Of course, we want to transfer anything that we have, that we have produced successfully in the lab to the, to the industry. We want to commercialize it, okay? Like people have uh, invented the COVID-19 vaccine. Of course, they, they started in the lab. Yeah? Everything started in the lab. But how they want, to, how, how they want people to benefit that COVID-19? Of course, they have to produce in large scale. They want to commercialize the things. They want to make sure that the product reach the market. So that's why they have to produce in large scale. Okay, so that is the objective eh? to commercialize the whatever the research products and to make sure that it can be marketed, it can reach the consumers. Uh, and of course, to derive profit, eh? you see the those young, uh, those who created, developed vaccine uh, COVID-19, uh, the, the, uh, the, the couples again, they by the Germany, eh, Germany? Ke? It's a two kids that uh, uh, reside in Germany. They are very rich now because, you know, can you imagine the profits that they get from the vaccine? Yeah. So uh, if you do research, good research, you, you, you can commercialize the product. You can derive profit from that. Okay. Um, the third objective to increase the production capacity of a unit, thus lowers the investment variable and production costs. Means that if let's say you produce something in large volume, um, the vaccine, whatever, the um, pharmaceutical, uh, the cost per unit would be reduced. You know that? Okay. Compared to if, let's say, we produce at small scale. Okay. So that is the, the importance of the, the objectives of scaling up. Okay. Uh, when do we need to do scaling up studies? Okay. So as I said just now, scaling up, scale up, is a branch of study. It's a type of research yeah, that, that comes after the optimization of whatever the process, like fermentation. Okay, So basically, when we want to study, when we want to scale up the, 
the uh, process is when it involves any new fermentation product, any new, any new process. Okay, so let's say you have maybe you you have uncover um, new vaccine, maybe like I don't know vaccine for this a new disease, right? So it means that it is a new uh, product. Of course, it has undergo the uh, a new process. So it means that. It has not been commercialized yet, so that is when you have to scale up, or you need to study how to scale up the uh, that the production of that product. And then uh, it's not just about new product. Let's say you have, uh, let's say we know that bioethanol is is an old product actually. It has been produced for ages, right? And but um, people use maybe for example they use the current uh, bioethanol in the market is produced using synthetic medium, for example. Synthetic medium is the media that that are produced chemically, okay, like glucose, etc. Uh, and maybe let's say they have used like certain established organism, like uh, the famous one is S. cerevisiae, yes, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Okay, so this is the, the uh, established uh, conditions or practice. But let's say you want to produce bioethanol and you have uncovered a, a new substrate, maybe waste, let's say banana waste, okay, that can replace um, synthetic media, means that you can reduce the cost of the operation if let's say you use banana waste. So it means that bioethanol is an old product, but you want to give like a change in the production, a new media, see, new media, or maybe you use like E. coli instead, or maybe this is like um, genetically, apa? genetically engineered E. coli. Maybe this E. coli can do much better than S. cerevisiae. So it means that there is a change in terms of the fermentation process, be it media, be it the organism. So it means that you also have to do scale up studies. Yeah? Uh, so you cannot use the, pro, uh, the procedure that people have used to scale up the bioethanol because the substrate is different, uh, the organism is different. Okay. Uh, and the third condition is when you involve new fermenters. Of course, if let's say, uh, let's say you have established uh, the production using uh, fermenter type uh, A, for example, yeah, and then suddenly there is a new type of bioreactor that uh, comes into the market, and maybe you want to try the performance of fermenter B. So you have to develop a strategy for scaling up the fermentation process using that new fermenters, okay? Uh, what are the stages in scaling up studies? So here, uh, this is where I mentioned just now, okay? So basically the, the scale, uh, uh, we have, we have um, lab scale, okay, lab scale. And then pilot scale, and then industrial or uh, production, we call it to scale. Okay, and you can expect the size is increasing. Yeah, size. Uh, so lab scale is what you do now, like you use shake class. You use a uh, mini bioreactor, and even in uh, in the lab, we also have fermenter, small fermenter, like one liter fermenter, uh, ten liter fermenter is still considered as lab scale, okay? But after the lab scale, we have bigger uh, scales where this involve larger, larger bioreactor, okay? Like maybe one thousand liter. This one is maybe um, five thousand liter, for example. So it's is larger and of course industrial is much larger like this one yeah, you can see it's like a big a tall tank yeah, uh, vessel uh, and what is the importance of every scale here so we have lab scale and then we have a uh, lab uh, pilot scale then industrial scale okay so lab scale of course is for the research and development for us to start uh, the study. Yeah, we start always with uh, the lab scale. We cannot jump directly into the industrial scale. Lab scale, you study in the shake flask. Yeah? Uh, you study in the mini bioreactor and then you move it to the small bioreactor. 
And uh, once you have established whatever the process at the lab scale, then you transfer to the pilot scale. So the importance of the pilot scale is that it is an intermediate scale between lab and industrial. Yeah? So it means that uh, if let's say anything that you have to change uh, in terms of the process, you can still prevent uh, big loss. You don't, you don't incur that big loss much, as much if let's say you transfer directly to the industrial scale. So it serves as an intermediate scale, okay? Um, and once you have established uh, a good strategy at the pilot scale, and only then you transfer it to the by, uh, industrial scale, okay? So that is the three different stages. Huh? Lab scale um, involve uh, small platforms, right? Uh, example of study, you, you want to screen for the potential microbes, you want to optimize the fermentation. Remember, we talked about mini bioreactor last two weeks. So that is for the optimization studies. Okay, um, so that's the importance of lab scale. All right, um, and then pilot scale is the intermediate, is where you want to test at larger scale than the lab scale, whether it works or not, okay? The capacity is between 100 to 10,000 liter, the scale of the fermenter, okay? And this is, this is uh, a pilot scale. Like it is still in a, let's say in a room where the rector is, um, you can see the rector, like big rector. But if, if for the industrial, it is uh, much bigger, okay? This one is pilot scale. Okay, uh, industrial scale is something like this. Okay, this one. So you can see it's such a big uh, tank, right? Uh, vessel. And the volume is more than 5,000 liter. Okay, what are, how? Okay, now let's have a look at how. How to scale up. So it must be based on certain rules, certain procedure, certain ways. It's not just about increasing the size of the vessel macam tu je okay uh, so maknanya uh, you want if let's say you you want to scale up kan so it's not just about increasing the size there must be certain strategies what are the things that you have to change what are the things that you have to maintain okay there are uh, rules of thumb okay so now let's have a look at what are the changes in the operation okay uh, remember we have uh, when we talk about scale up we have two scales of platforms so uh, obviously, when we talk about small reactor and bigger reactor, in terms of the configuration, in terms of the size, the power would be different. More power is needed to operate the large scale, isn't it? And more power is needed to stir the things, the, the broth inside. More impellers, the configuration of the impellers would be different. Let's say in the small scale, you might need a one impeller, maybe. But in the larger reactor, you need maybe of five impellers or ten impellers, depending on the height of the vessel, okay? Uh, and also, the, in terms of the mixing um, dynamics, yeah, uh, it will be different inside the reactor. And sometimes, it's more often than not, it would be more complicated to stir in the bigger reactor, okay? Just imagine you, the kitchen, lah, you masak dalam small pot, okay? Uh, you kacau semua dah rata. But if, let's say, you want to cook in bigger pot, macam periuk kawah, contohnya kan. Uh, so it's very tiring, it's very uh, uh, intensive, uh, labor intensive to mix. Sometimes rasa pun tak sama kan. Uh, so that's, that's how it, it is uh, uh, when we scale up the fermentation. Uh, and it is more because it involves microbes. Sometimes microbes in the bigger reactor, they are not happy because of they don't have enough oxygen, contohnya. So they're not producing the product. Okay, uh, so that's the things or the risk. Uh, the size and volume, okay, of course, mixing efficiency yeah, is, is uh, different, yeah, uh, is change, yeah. And now here, temperature and pH control system. Uh, don't get confused with temperature and pH. Uh, the temperature and pH are the same. Let's say in the, uh, in the small reactor, we have pH 7, and then the temperature is 30 degrees. That needs to be... Uh, that needs to be maintained in the bigger reactor because it involves the same kind of culture again. So pH 7 and 30 degrees. But what is different is the control system. Control system means how the temperature is controlled. 
Let's say how uh, in small reactor, 30 degrees is controlled, is maintained. That is the control system. And also same goes to the pH. Uh, how the control system in the larger reactor. Okay, so the, the things that is different is the control system, not the temperature and pH. And then number of impellers and design, okay. Uh, another thing is heat transfer. Of course, when we talk about small reactor, it's easy uh, to control you know, the heat transfer or how we want to remove the heat because fermentation is a long process. So it means that uh, the heat is generated during the fermentation and it needs to be removed at certain point. Okay, so those things will be uh, different eh, in terms of the system, how the heat is transferred or uh, removed. And then in terms of sterilization process, okay, so for small reactor, we can still put in the autoclave, right? The, the one that you see in the lab. Or, and for 10, seven and a half liter reactor, you can still put in the autoclave, but for more than 10 liter, so that uh, the fermenter is no longer, I mean, like the fermenter will sit there, you cannot move it. So you, it, it is connected to the steam. So it has uh, in situ sterilization technique. In situ sterilization uh, technique. Okay, so it means that the technique how to sterilize the fermenters will be different from uh, small and large rectors. Okay, heat removal, yes, okay, this one I've mentioned. So what are the methods in of scaling up? Okay, so these have established by these have established by uh, the engineers. Eh? Remember uh, another uh, overlap field of biotech uh, is um, biotech engineering. Okay, so here go all the engineers who design the reactors um, and the process. Okay, and they work with the scientists. They work with the biotechnologists. So, uh, but this thing is more engineering, more to physics. Yeah. Uh, so they have developed certain, or they have identified several ways how to uh, carry out the scale up. Yeah? What are the rules? What are the methods? Okay. Um, so there are certain rules of thumb. Okay. Uh, by applying this rule, one assumes. Okay. So have a look at these um, parameters. These are what we call scaling up parameters are uh, you for you you just have to know you don't have to you, you don't have to worry about um how to find kla how to you know how to find the power input okay just just this is just an introduction to you these are the parameters scaling up parameters but you, you have to remember lah, eh? uh, kla power input but you don't have to go into detail for each of that okay so uh, these are some of the options okay uh, and when I say options, means whenever we want to scale up, is remember it's a study. So it means that if let's say I want to scale up E. coli fermentation, uh, producing um, amylase enzyme. Okay, so uh, I have to figure out because I do not know. If let's say you search from the literature, there are so many methods. So you have to try and error. Maybe you know that E. coli fermentation is an aerobic. Uh, fermentation, so you have to maybe you can choose uh, something related to the oxygen transfer as the option or as the method. Okay, right now, here are all the options. Eh? Uh, so it can be um, the method based on the rector geometry, it can be based on uh, a parameter called volumetric oxygen transfer coefficient. So this one is for aerobic fermentation normally. And then we also have power input per unit volume, okay? Uh, volumetric gas flow rate per unit volume of liquid, okay? That is another technique. Superficial gas velocity, mixing time, impeller Reynolds number, specific aeration rate. So what is meant by this? If you see here, uh, these parameters need to be maintained constant during the scale up, okay? Uh, so that, that's the rule. Uh, means that in order to maintain the these parameters constant what we have to do we have to do like some uh, preliminary studies on the parameter okay how to characterize for example kla how to characterize kla behavior in small rector and large rector so that's the additional study that needs to be carried out under scale up apart from the fermentation okay mm. 
uh, scale up strategies may adopt okay, any of the scale up parameters above. Okay, maybe if let's say I choose scale A, so means constant, uh, constant scale A for both, uh, both vectors. Okay, let's say it's only involve one strategy. It can also involve combination of two or three uh, scale up parameters. Let's say I choose scale A, and also maybe um, specific aeration rate. That means that those things need to be maintained similar in both platforms. Okay. Uh, that's what it meant by it can be we can use any of the scale up parameter or we can combine the parameters. How to know which one is which one? That is research. You have to do uh, research. You have to investigate uh, which one is uh, suitable. Okay. Before the scale up, uh, before we want to do the fermentation in two different reactors, what we have to do in scale up studies, we have to characterize. This is what I said just now. Characterize the scale up parameter if let's say you have chosen KLA for example uh, so you have to characterize the KLA what is meant by characterization characterization of KLA is we invest we measure we measure the KLA in the small scale uh, look how it behaves what's the behavior and then we also uh, investigate how KLA in the larger rector okay that is the uh, studies before eh? characterization uh, and this is crucial for us to know what value that we want to adopt because we need to maintain constant value over here. That is the rule, the rule that has been underlined by uh, the engineer or the scientist uh, who, or those experts in scale up studies. Okay. All right. Now, these are examples of the results of characterization of KLA. Okay. Uh, you don't have to worry, as I said, you don't have to worry how to find KLA, but you just have to know, uh, Nina superficially or just briefly okay um, so this is the examples of the results of KLA of characterization in fermenter at two different scales so this is this is small rector so there are certain ways like how to how to find the KLA huh? and this is actually my results during my PhD okay so example so this is how it uh, KLA is KLA is just now is the oxygen transfer coefficient. So it's a parameter that describes the oxygen transfer uh, in the vessel. Okay. So the means that the higher the value of KLA, the higher the, the rate of the oxygen transfer. I hope you understand. Okay. It's a, it, it involves a little physics. Lah. Okay. Let's say imagine this one is the liquid. Kan? And then uh, which is the media. And then you have oxygen. Of course, there is an uh, dissolved oxygen, right? Let's say you sparge the oxygen inside that. So it means we remember that oxygen is gas. This one is liquid. So there must be a transfer from gas to the liquid. Okay. And at the end, we want to know how much is oxygen inside the liquid because that would be the oxygen that will be consumed by the cells. Okay. So it means that when we study the KLA, we want to know how fast the oxygen is transferred from the gas phase to the liquid. Okay, I hope you understand. So the bigger the value of the KLA, the, uh, the faster lah, the oxygen transfer. So basically what, what affects the KLA, what affects the oxygen transfer is the speed. Of course, when you talk about bioreactor, isn't it? And oxygen is sparged in, oxygen is here. So the, the faster the speed, the more, the higher the rate of the oxygen transfer inside the vessel, isn't it? So it, it involves speed, it um, uh, corresponds to speed, and also the A flow rate. Uh, A flow rate. Uh, so how much is oxygen is transferred? If let's say more oxygen means the faster like the, the transfer, uh, the rate of the transfer. So basically that is KLA. Yeah? Do you want to have a break? Five minutes before we go into the case review. Five minutes break. Okay. Anyway, uh, when we study apni LU six kan rapid fermentation process, we talk about mini bioreactors, right? Uh, and one of them is micro twenty four, and the one that I introduced. So this is how it looks like. 
micro 24. So you can see there are 24 small vessels and each of these is 10 milliliter, the total volume. Uh, so the amount of culture that I can put in is seven milliliter. Okay. Uh, and it's made of plastic. This one is made from plastic. So I, I took from my lab in the UK. So normally, actually, once we use this, I mean, it comes uh, in a sterile condition. So uh, I transfer the media. And once I, I'm done with 24 fermentations, 24 experiments, I just discarded it. Okay? It's a single use. It cannot be used uh, many times. Okay. So if you see the, the size... Huh? Yeah, I don't like you. You can take And Apani, um, talking about micro scale, micro scale, again. So th this one is mini, mini scale. It's up to 10 milliliter. Uh, micro scale is uh, less than one milliliter, again. So actually, this is the technology. You can see this. It's a chip. It's a chip. So uh, this technology has been used uh, by the developed countries. They carry out fermentation in this chip. Can you imagine? Uh, so there are channels. This is the one that I uh, created uh, when I was doing my PhD. So there are channels inside, you know, this this one. And what we have to do is like we pipette and the things running there. So this one is actually much smaller and uh, it would be more useful for uh, rapid uh, fermentation. Yeah, that's why the... Yeah. But we don't cover this uh, topic in, in our course. But just let, to let you know, there is a technology of using chip for fermentation. Okay. Eh, tak ada ni ke? Tak nak keluar ke? Sekejap eh, uh, five minutes eh. So when is your FYP presentation? Nine. So it's not next week, right? Okay, okay.
Okay, I have a game here. Just to check your understanding in scale up. Okay. So in the final exam, there will be one question on scale up. So you better master this topic clearly. Okay. Especially on the interpretation of scale up. How to know whether that scale up is working or not. Yeah? So that's what we're going to have a look at uh, in case review. Okay. So this one is just a simple quiz to check your understanding. Okay, three questions. Okay. So go to play.bluecut.com. That's the game ID. Okay, uh, this one, this game is limited to 30 students. So once it reached 30, then I will start. Okay, siapa yang tak ni, you can join the next one. Okay, this one is 29. One more. Okay. Are you ready? Eh, kerja ya, kerja. I don't know why. Eh, kerja. Aiyah, kerja, kerja. Cuma ni mana ni? Uh, I think edit. Ah, jom. I pun jaya. Jaya. Tadi you dah sampai soalan tiga ke? Dua soalan. Ada yang dah sampai soalan tiga? I pun tak faham kenapa. Oh, time limit ke? Kejap ni. Jaya. Set the time limit for all questions. 30 second. Tak kot dah.
time limit for all questions. I don't know. Twenty second. Tapi ni, I put tadi. Speed accuracy. Oh, okay. Maybe yang question tadi tu. Okay, okay. Masuk balik. 30 question. Same question. Oh, dia tak main yang soalan nombor dua. Oh, lain soalan dah. Eh? Oh. Oh, saya tekan salah tadi. Sorry. Oh, this one ke, right? Okay, okay, okay. Oh, yang tu saya skor, eh? Okay, okay. Okay, now uh, this one is the one. Uh, it okay, host. So it. Yes, right.
Ini oke okay, tak? So yang bergerak ni You jawab balik ke? Uh, dia bagi tak jawapan betul after bagi okay. okay tak apalah you as long as you learn something from the questions okay I pun baru start uh, ni I baru buat pagi tadi ya tak tak tahu macam mana nak start nanti I tengok balik okay ada siapa nak join lagi <laughs> yang tak join lagi Takpelah nanti I buat soalan tu dalam game lain lah and then I put on elip okay? Alright. Okay. Now let's uh, continue. Okay, thank you for your participation. I hope you learn something from the questions. Alright. Uh, okay, now this is the important part. Eh? Uh, case review. So this one is just to show you lah, just to give you... Uh, an exposure how a scale up studies is carried out okay is carried out so what is important for you in this part is you understand you understand uh, the stage and the importance of it okay I, I don't expect you to know how to measure the GLA how to use the formula you don't have to but you have to understand the flow of the uh, process okay and it's very specific is aerobic fermentation and is actually based on my research uh, I'm using mini biorector Okay, this is the background, uh, mini biorector, which is this one, the my uh, this one, micro twenty four, ni this one. You can see that I put the the culture into it, and I put it on the machine. Yeah? So I want to scale up the fermentation from micro twenty four uh, with the working volume. I use six point five milliliter, right? Six point five milliliter. The organism that I use here is E. coli, recombinant E. coli. My product is transaminase, is an enzyme. Uh, the platforms, I want to scale up from micro 24 to stirred tank fermenter. So stirred tank fermenter is up to this, this bit, okay? And uh, the total volume is seven and a half liter. Working volume is five liter, okay? By right, you should know what is working volume. It's the volume inside that we work on, yeah? the culture. Okay, some backgrounds um, or scale up method. So what is the scale up method that I have chosen? Okay, I have used K, uh, KLA, constant KLA, volumetric oxygen transfer coefficient. KLA stands for volumetric oxygen transfer coefficient. And also I uh, use constant specific aeration rate. So I use two methods or two, uh, two parameters. Okay, um, so some backgrounds. I have optimized the production in micro 24 means that I have uh, known already the strategy how to get high transaminase in micro 24. So the purpose of this study is to see how the fermentation uh, behaves, how it works in larger bioreactor, which is seven and a half liter stirred tank fermenter. And this one is within the lab scale. It's still between in, in the lab scale. Okay, so that's some background. Okay, so what I have done during this study, uh, so the, the first step that I did 
I characterize the KLA. Remember, characterization is important because I've chosen KLA, so I have to characterize the KLA in micro 24 and in the larger fermenter, in both rectors. Um, and how I did this means that I have to fill up the uh, smaller rector 32 dengan bigger rector with um, media, with the same media that I use, but I, uh, I, apa, I, I don't include the microbes. So it means that I run it, I increase the speed, and I increase the A flow rate and see how the KLA behavior. So there is a way how to measure the KLA. And this is, uh, this is the, the thing lah, uh, that I have to do during the characterization. So once I have the profiles in the uh, small scale and I have the profiles in the larger scale, so what I have to do, I have to find the overlap or match KLA values. Okay, so how to know this? Let's say, um, I think yeah. I think this one is. Let's get up. I think this one is not updated. One the this file. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, uh, one other day. Okay, find the overlap match KLA values between the uh, platforms. So, uh, if you see the one, uh, the little profile there, that's the KLA profile that I got in Micro 24, and the bigger one is the in the larger rector. So I have to compare the profiles and find one value that overlaps, means that it exists in both platforms. And that value here is 66 per hour. Per hour is the unit for KLA. So once I have identified that value, okay, I use that value and I proceed with uh, finding um, the conditions that I have to set. So it means that that, that is the basis. Eh? The KLA just now is my basis of scaling up. Okay, so here are some information about the two rectors. So you, you see micro 24, the total rector volume is 10 milliliter, working volume six and a half, seven and a half liter is uh, five liter, all right? Um, and the rest, okay, now, what, the, what is the information that I have to find based on the constant KLA values? So I know that from the profile here, if you see here, uh, the, small, uh, the small profile there, it represents the KLA profile at 800 RPM. But um, in the larger reactor, uh, that is the thing that I have to find out, okay? Uh, it's not given directly from the graph, so I have to find out. And I have to use a certain formula to find uh, that value that relates the speed and the KLA, okay? Uh, so this is just uh, for you to know, okay? So that's the things that I have to figure out from there, right? And once I figure out from there, and the rest are all the information, you can see that pH is the same for both platforms, 7. Temperature is 37 degrees for both. So it's the same, okay? Uh, so there are things that you can set the same and there are things that you have to change during the scale-up operation, right? And speed is one of the things that you have to change. So now, once I, I have to use that formula, Okay, KLA equal to this. You, you can see there is N. N is re refers to the speed. Okay, uh, don't worry about that formula, but that's how I got 298 RPM. I relate KLA with 66, and then the rest are all the constants or the values that I know, and I solve for N. And I solve N as 298. Uh, that's the value that I have uh, to use for the larger vector, the speed. RPM is the unit for the speed, eh? revolution per minute. So once I have this information, only then I proceed with the real fermentation. Okay. So all of this, 
these are all the characterization of KLA. That is an additional study that we have to do before we run the real fermentation. Okay, once I have all the information here, only then I carry out the fermentation, real fermentation in both platforms. Um, so I have uh, six and a half milliliter working volume in small reactor, large reactor, five liter or equivalent to 5,000 milliliter. So how to, how to calculate the number of folds? You refer to the working volume of the bigger one divided by the smaller one. So here is about 769 fold, okay? the 769 times bigger, I mean the scale. Okay, uh, so once I carry out the fermentation, so what I have to do, I have to analyze the results from the fermentation for both platforms, okay? Uh, so remember when you do the fermentation last time, you take the samples, you analyze the cell growth, you have to analyze also the glucose and also the product formation. So that's what I did for both platforms. Uh, I analyze and compare, not just analyze, but also compare, okay? So these are the results that I got. I have plotted it to see how it looks like on the graph uh, and to see whether the pattern is the same or not, whether uh, the title is similar or not, okay? Um, so this is what I got and what I have to analyze. So remember the objective of scale up is to make sure that the performance is similar means that we do not want to get lower production in higher scale, isn't it? We want to get comparable, similar. So here, this is actually after many runs. Lah. I dah dapat, I tak tahu. I dah banyak run yang ni yang the best, okay? So it's not just that I run sekali dapat terus macam ni, tak? Okay, it's, it takes time. And this is the things that you can see, okay? Um, so we just go here. All right. Uh, so basically when we talk about Fermentation performance, it must be related to the cell growth, to the substrate consumption, and also the product. Okay, so this is the three basic things that we talk about when we talk about fermentation performance. Of course, we want to know how the cells grow. Without the growth of the cell, there no, there's no product. How is the substrate is consumed? How it is eaten? Consumption of the glucose or whatever the substrate that we uh, provide and normally we, we uh, analyze the glucose because that is the main uh, diet, the main uh, component of the media. And also how is the product is formed throughout the fermentation time. So this is what I got. Okay, the first one is cell growth. If you see the cell growth over here, um, this is for uh, micro 24 and this is for seven and a half liter. So uh, you see that it is quite the same, right? Follows the same trend. It means that it has the leg phase and then it has the log phase, stationary, and of course I don't uh, continue until death phase. But both profiles exhibit the same phases, basically. Okay? Okay, that's one thing. So it means that it, it is okay. So another thing is you have to see the maximum cell concentration. So it means that here the maximum cell concentration is about uh, 12. And this one is uh, nearly 12, let's say around 10, 10 something, okay, or maybe 10, yeah. This one is about, wait, uh, this one is not 12, it's uh, 11, uh, 11. Okay, so this is about 10 gram per liter, this one is about 11 gram per liter. So how okay is this? Is it okay or not? So I have to do statistical analysis. Statistical analysis, uh, so you know that uh, when we do the statistical analysis, we want to see whether there is a significant difference or not. So when there is a significant difference, which is denoted by the p-value, uh, if there is a significant difference, means there is a huge difference. But if let's say there is no significant difference, I guess this one has no uh, significant difference, 10 and 11, tak banyak beza. So it means that it, is, it can be concluded as comparable. Okay? Can you get the word comparable there? similar. So performance is okay, means that it is reproducible in the larger scale. So that's cell growth, we're not done yet. So we have to analyze the substrate consumption. Okay, substrate means it must be reduced over the time. Um, this one is the substrate and this one is the substrate. So normally we would say, uh, we would begin the same value of the substrate, like this one is around, uh, how much is it? 30 35 or more than 
35 lah, 35 gram per liter of glycerol because I use glycerol in this case. This one is the same. So how is the consumption? Whether at the end it reached zero or not. Okay, it reached zero. The pattern is the same. So that's the thing that we analyze, okay, between the two scales. And also talking about consumption, uh, we also uh, calculate the percentage of consumption. So this is one of the questions asked in your practical tool. Means that you have to find out the percentage of consumption. Maknanya kalau you minum, you ada 100, uh, one liter of water, contohnya. You, uh, at the end of the day, it's just left 100 milliliter. How much you have consumed? 1,000 uh, in the beginning, you are left with only 100 milliliter. 900 kan? Uh, if, let's say you want to calculate the percentage, cari lah percentage, it's like 90% you have consumed. Okay, so the same thing for for the media over here, you have to find the percentage of consumption of the substrate. Okay, I hope you understand how to find that. Okay, maybe, kalau, let's say it's 95%, it's good lah. It means that it has consumed lots of the substrate. It means it grow well. It You know, you can relate to the growth as well. But if, let's say, the consumption is 50%, uh, but in the uh, small scale, you got like 98%. So there is a huge difference. So it's not comparable okay but in this case is comparable and then the last one is the product uh, because i'm producing here uh, enzyme okay and this is how i quantify the enzyme so i compare so the white one here is the micro 24 and the bigger one is a uh, seven and a half liter certain fermenter so I analyze at different time interval, 12 hour, 24, 48. Is it the same or not? Of course, there is a difference. There is a difference. But how to know whether that difference is significant or not? I have to do statistical analysis. Okay. Uh, so it means that uh, I have to compare the mean values. I have to check the P value. Remember in your biostats, you study about uh, ANOVA. Okay. You check the P value. If the P value is less than 0 0.05, means that they are, the values are significantly different. But in this case, I have determined the p-value. You can see that this is uh, what I have summarized from the profile just now. The maximum cell concentration, 11.3 in micro 24, 11.7. So you can see it's only 0 0.4, the difference. Uh, when I check using statistical analysis, uh, the p-value is 0 0.67, which is less, uh, which is greater than 0 0.05. So it means that there is no significant difference okay uh, in this case our aim if let's say the results are good there should be no significant difference Farm. Uh, so uh, you have to understand also how to interpret the statistical data okay um, okay so this one if you see specific growth rate is is the same it means it's good the performance is good for both it's comparable so the target is to get comparable performance, remember, and or with less uh, difference in the values. Okay, this one, uh, maximum transaminase specific activity. This is the value that I got. There is a difference, but when I check using statistical analysis, it shows that uh, the p-value uh, tells me that the values are not significantly different. Okay, and for this one as well. Okay, so this is the importance of the p-value. You might need to do statistical analysis as well in your FYP. Okay, so in conclusion, what I can conclude from here, the performance is comparable uh, in terms of the cell growth, in terms of the substrate consumption, in terms of the product. Why I say that? Because uh, when based on the p-value here, the p-value suggests that there is no significant difference of the values. So it means that the, uh, the scale up is successful. Yeah. Okay. What is meant by successful scale up? The process can be translated from small scale to larger scale. It is possible to produce similar fermentation performance. Okay, this is this is something related to I mean, this is something that you have to understand for you to uh your final. Okay. Right. So any question on this? Anything that you don't understand from the case review? I try to simplify it to you. I try it to make it simple, understandable. Hmm? 
So when we talk about scale up of centrifugation, yeah, maybe contohnya dalam DSP ada banyak operation, there are certain uh, different methods, different strategy. So this one is just for fermentation. And this one is, you, you see, it's very specific, aerobic fermentation. Uh, so KLA is oxygen transfer coefficient. So uh, we can use KLA because this is an aerobic. But if let's say it is not an aerobic fermentation, you have to choose a uh, strategy, different strategy. Maybe you can choose something on, I don't know, impeller Reynolds number, yeah? different strategy, but not oxygen transfer coefficient. This is only for aerobic fermentation. Okay. All right. So that's all for today. Uh, I hope you have some pictures about uh, scale up, yeah, scale up of fermentation process. All right. Uh, why we do the scale up? What is scale up? Why we do it? How to do it? And how to interpret the scale up? Uh, operation okay what are the things that you look at when you want to analyze the scale up operation all right so that's the end of uh, our lectures yeah we have covered all the eight LUs I hope you have learned something from bioprocess um, I hope you can see fermentation in a different way now okay uh, and if let's say you study ferment you study biotechnology bukan semestinya you not study biotechnology is bila you graduate. Uh, not, not, not. It doesn't mean that I discourage you. Tapi is is um is a degree. Sometimes uh, your rezeki dekat tempat lain. You you jadi PTD ke, you jadi apa? Cikgu ke, you jadi whatever the job kan. Uh, but the thing is, you have the different perspective tau. So if let's say you jadi PTD, you tahu PTD, pegawai tak diplomatik. Let's say you join government, you jadi pegawai tak diplomatik. Maybe you tak, you tak, sometimes you tak apply sangat science. Tapi you you have the scientific mindset. Itu yang sebenarnya uh, the university wants to uh, produce. Okay, graduates with scientific mindset. So the way how you see the things around you is different. Okay, daripada orang yang mungkin tak study di university ataupun tak study biotech. Okay, uh, that's the thing. So have that kind of nila spirit and uh, mindset lah. Eh? Okay, bila you you grow the kind of ni, you banyak develop your mind. Eh? Your mind will not be the same uh, from the first day you enter. Ada something lain. Okay, uh, so the same thing lah. You bila contohnya you nak orang tanya, what is fermentation? Your uh, siblings tanya ke, your cousins tanya ke, your family macik tanya ke. So of course you nila you faham kan so you you have to you have you that's your role lah to explain eh? uh, based on your understanding okay all right okay that's all thank you very much for your attention okay for next week uh I let up I would put some activities in on elip okay so it's basically more to for your revision for your preparation uh so please have a look at it okay uh so anything I would just uh, bus you on Telegram, okay? All the best for your FYP presentation. I'm going to be examiner for some of you. Yes.